In this video, we're going to cover some of the new updates that came out as part of Power BI's April 2024 feature update, including things like the new 100% stacked uh, area chart, new updates to the storytelling in PowerPoint, and other new features. All of that and more, so without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's start by covering this new Power BI core visual that came out this month, the 100% stacked area chart. So this visualizes your data in distribution in 100% formats and shows how this distribution changes over time in 100%. So pretty much works exactly like the 100% stacked bar chart, which currently exists. So this is a great visual tool that you can use to visualize that, as I mentioned, distribution of your data across you know, different time periods uh, without needing to worry about the overall total. You just want to see how that distribution changes over time. This visual is accompanied by some enhancements to the line chart visuals, which allows you to do things like adjust the transparency, adjust the smoothness and steps, which I'm going to try to cover in a separate video because there seems to be a separate uh, blog post covering it and I want to test it out for myself so um, uh, there are just small changes that's happened but uh, it has a lot of impact when it comes to narrative and storytelling so I'm gonna try to cover that in a future video the Q&A feature saw some improvements a couple of months back especially around these linguistic relationships where Copilot was integrated to be used to fill in the gaps that your synonyms couldn't. Linguistic relationships has been enhanced even further in this month's update. So now when you open the Q&A, you will have an option to uh, add relationships from Copilot, which from what I understand, if you ask questions in natural language and your synonyms can't find a match, this is where Copilot kicks in and tries to find a likely match from your uh, data model based on the relationships um, that it can gather. And this is a great utility, especially if your synonyms aren't mature enough to the point to catch all of those natural language questions that it gets. The types of suggestions that you can get uh, can be customized from the settings menu. So you can either choose if you want to get suggestions based on your synonyms only or a mixture of your synonyms names or copilot so you have a bit of control over what you want to use so just a reminder copilot uh, like any other copilot features in power bi needs to be explicitly approved in your tenant settings for you to be able to utilize it and that's because um, the data that it processes needs to be processed in US data centers. So especially for you guys out there who are using copilot outside of US you need to specifically explicitly approve the uh, Power BI service to send your data uh, overseas to the US data centers for it to be processed and then be sent back to you. So if you're working with sensitive data and you don't want this data leaving your current region, especially if you're outside of the US, uh, this is probably something um, that you might want to consider not using. Storytelling for PowerPoint has had a lot of updates this month as well. There is now a drop down option on the bottom left hand side corner of uh, your embedded Power BI add-ins in PowerPoint where you can choose between seeing snapshots of your data or live data, which is a really nice addition. And there's another feature that you can uh, toggle on the bottom right hand corner, which is the continuous auto refresh, which I think uh, has a lot of potential. So now with these options, you can set uh, how often uh, if you want to continuously refresh the live data that you have on your PowerPoint slides. And that will pretty much refresh the preview of your report that you're showing in your PowerPoint slide at that duration that you set to it. So this is, I think, is a really useful feature because before you had to manually toggle that refresh uh, on the PowerPoint slides for you to get the most recent 
uh, version of that report but now you don't have to because you can just set it to, to be continuously refreshing with this option I'm already imagining a lot of really good use cases for this like for example if you want to show your Power BI reports in a big screen and you want it to be continuously refreshing uh, you can set this option in the PowerPoint slide to, for it to do so another small update is that if you embed Power BI into PowerPoint and your slides don't have a title yet, uh, you can uh, automatically populate a slide title, uh, which uh, just speeds up your you know, development by a little bit. Dynamic subscriptions in Power BI where it lets you customize and add filters to your subscriptions to be sent out to your users on an automated scheduled basis. Its limit of 50 users have now been increased to 1000 users. So you can set up to 1000 users as your recipient for these dynamic subscriptions. I think this is a really cool feature and unfortunately I haven't been able to cover it because uh, it's not available yet in my region I'm based in the UK um, but uh, at some point in the next few weeks once it becomes more generally available I'll try to cover this and see how it actually all works. Folders are now supported in the mobile app workspaces. Now folders have actually been available in the Power BI service for a little while now but uh, to be honest with you I haven't personally used it but I think it's a great way for you um, another option for you to organize your ID items in the Power BI service or in your workspaces in general because there's not a lot of organization methods for you to use there apart from uh, let's say alphabetical storage uh, alphabetical sorting so um, now it's available for the mobile uh, app workspaces there's a new clear barcode button that is available for you for those reports that you have barcode enabled now if you didn't know and I didn't know this myself either um, you can use uh, power bi to scan real life barcodes to use as a filter uh, in your reports so I imagine if you work let's say on a shop floor and you want to check an inventory of an item for example you can scan the barcode of that item and it will or the Power BI mobile app will open up the relevant uh, reports with information about that item to give you more information uh, item information inventory information which I think is really crucial if you're um, you know uh, using it uh, like in real world so the clear barcode essentially allows you to just clear the filter that has been applied by scanning a barcode so that you can either scan another one or see everything so uh, since I haven't really covered barcodes yet I'm gonna try to cover this as well in the next video so that uh, I can try to test it out myself and see how it works in addition to that Power BI uh, reports can now be toggled to launch full screen so you can control this under settings um, and set this to open your report in full screen so this makes uh, some users experience a little bit more streamlined so they don't have to deal with the Power BI app they can set uh, or the admins can set certain reports to be open by default and open by with full screen so they don't have to worry about going to the certain workspace or opening a certain type of report it just makes this uh, whole experience a little bit easier. Lastly, if you've already updated your Power BI desktop to the April version, uh, under the home ribbon, you will most likely see this new co-pilot button. So this is now in preview and it lets you do a couple of things like uh, creating a report page, summarizing your semantic model or suggest a topic. Just a note though that if you want to use this, it does require you to have a premium or fabric capacity, which I don't think I have either. Either. so when I tried to click this it didn't let me or maybe it just didn't enable it in the admin portal settings so if you're interested in uh, learning what it actually does I'm gonna give it a try again and see if I can make this work and I'll try to cover it in a future video and that's really it for this month's updates so as usual I didn't cover everything that is in this month's updates only the ones that were pretty interesting to me so if you want to learn more about everything that's actually come out this month uh, leave a link to the full blog post in the description box below thanks for watching as usual give this video a like if you found it useful give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time 
ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.